hope you can hear me now. And uh, that is just, uh, uh, I'm trying today, first time to live stream. And uh, so I am working today on a Venetian style. So Venus, Italy, uh, the room, the whole room. And that is just uh, done in the 15th uh, and 16th century style, authentic actually designed, 15th, 16th century. And that's not done yet, of course. I'm working on, uh, uh, you know, on um, a lot of details, uh, but um, I want to explain to you. Uh, this is going to real uh, customer, and I'm not going to tell you who, but I'm going to uh, try to do the live stream and uh, I'll see uh, how it's going to work. Uh, if it's going to work out and uh, if uh, people going to like it or not. So if yes, then I'll continue to do that. If no, I'll just uh, stop live streaming and just continue with my school, uh, which is online. And uh, my school, you can check out. It's uh, schoolofwoodcarving.com. I mean, I invite you, I mean, join. Uh, obviously, in a live stream, I'm not going to be able to show all the tricks and uh, uh, my approach. Please do understand uh, the way I'm carving. I'm not saying that's the only way. And yes, I, I, I watched a lot of different uh, uh, wood carvers, uh, even online on YouTube and uh, other, uh, you know, channels. And uh, they saying, uh, well, the only my approach is uh, the right approach. And it's not true. Uh, the goal, what I am trying to show, it's uh, the way I'm approaching to wood carving. I'm not saying it's the only way, but I think uh, I developed uh, some uh, good skills, actually, approach to the big projects. And as you can see, uh, this project is uh, quite big. Okay, so it's huge, you know, only just that part alone, only this part is uh, about uh, 10 feet. Okay, so I'm talking about how long that one is, so it's 10 feet long. Okay, and uh, today uh, what I'm going to do, uh, you can see this small detail, and I'm going to just uh, work on that and see if it's uh, going to be... A, good or not okay and uh, please i welcome all the chat and all the people i mean you can join and ask me questions i'll try to read while i'm carving i'm not uh, promising so that uh, i'm going to answer everything but please feel free okay just uh, ask me anything and uh, we'll see how it's gonna work okay but anyway so we're gonna work today on this part just that small detail all right so and uh, uh and if you would love to see that uh, you know the whole development to the smallest details just uh, like i said before just welcome to sign up uh, for my school it's a uh, school of woodcarving.com okay but let me concentrate on this uh, detail and that Acanthus. It is Acanthus, even if it doesn't look like Acanthus, but it is. Okay, it is, and it's not just Acanthus. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of different Acanthuses. There's not just the Acanthus, Acanthus, only one type. There's a lot of different styles, uh, different periods uh, when people worked on those Acanthus. And uh, there's going to be intersection. And uh, let me try. Okay, I hope you can hear me. So, and uh, uh, David asks me, what type of wood is it? And that's, uh, I call it queen of woods. It's a lime wood. If you're in Europe and if you're in the United States, it's just the best wood. It's the best uh, for the wood carving. Okay. So, but let's start. Okay. So let me start. And usually my approach, uh, what I'm doing, I'm actually establishing the main form first the main form and I use a lot of uh, veiners which is uh, number 11 tools and in this case I'm gonna take uh, number 11 and seven millimeters little bigger than a quarter inch okay and let me do that and what I'm doing I'm actually just outlining first just outlining I'm setting in if you in uh, Europe, in European countries, so that process called 
setting in. And in this case, I could probably use uh, even bigger number 11. So let me use uh, 15 millimeters number 11 vayner, which is uh, approximately 5 eighths of an inch if you are in the United States. So 15 millimeters number 11. Once in a while, I'm going to check uh, my chat and see if there's any activity. And I do appreciate people already watching. Although my computer is a little away from me, so I can't see that what is going on right away. So I have to walk a little bit away, OK? and see it okay so that's uh, step number one what i'm doing i'm just uh, setting that in and in this case um, in this case i do not wanna i don't wanna remove too much of this height because i still want to keep my overall movement and as you can see uh, when i'm gonna show you you know the overall picture so i already removed most of the uh, you know of my carving and that's already has a low and high spots and I overall feel of it I want to keep it just like it is okay so now what I'm gonna do I'll take a skew a chisel which is a just a normal chisel double bevel but it has a skew okay if you are in UK that would be number two okay number two it's a skew chisel if you are in Europe so that would not be number two it would be just number one with the letter S most uh, most of the manufacturers would just to say it's a number at one number one and uh, they're gonna mark it the uh, S which means skew okay but it's still number one Okay, and again, I'm gonna keep uh, that high spot and I still have to dig a little deeper. So I need to establish my main form. So main form, and I'm gonna take uh, again 15 millimeters. I could actually get even bigger. I could get actually bigger than that. I think I could use uh, even 18 millimeters. It's a little less than three quarter of an inch, but approximately really close to three quarter of an inch. If you like imperial measurement. Again, I don't want to lose uh, overall picture what I have right here. So and I do have a another part which is gonna go underneath. Okay. By the way, uh, I do have a dedicated page to live stream on my site. And, and you are welcome to check this out. Uh, there's a menu and you can click and hopefully it's gonna give a little better quality right there so but we'll see i mean uh, we'll see maybe it's not gonna be too bad today i'm just to try and first time okay uh, so now i'm gonna take a big uh, gouge okay so that is a number seven but it's huge okay it's huge it's a three inches and one eighth of an inch and chop down the main form and uh, in this design I do not want to repeat too much you know uh, there is a law 
there is a law. Uh, so if you have a detail somewhere, you have to repeat somewhere else, uh, which is a law of design, maybe different scale, but you still have to repeat that. And yes, that is going to re repetition, for example, of uh, this detail, but the movement itself is going to be different. It, it's still the same movement. Uh, if you look this way, it's still going to go like this. But in this case, uh, let me show you, let me try to show you from the side. Okay, so you can see that goes like that and it has uh, extensions uh, going all the way uh, to the sides, which is going to go later underneath of uh, this big detail. In this case, I'm not going to do that. It's still going to go uh, that direction, but the movement itself is going to go uh, like going like that. Okay, if it makes sense, and I hope it makes sense, that is what my goal. Okay, so just like that. And let me check the. Okay, so let me let me do that. And uh, usually, uh, I'm gonna probably repeat myself. Uh, I try to establish the main form. Set in, and I just cracked it up. So that tool was a little too big. And that was 15 millimeters, five eighths of an inch, number 11, which is a vayner. my form I do have plenty of uh, uh, material so uh, overall thickness of this piece to that point it's about six inches it's what I have to the bottom of it so I have plenty plenty of uh, material to work with okay so now I'm not gonna do anything else to this part so I'm gonna start uh, my movement right here okay Again, uh, uh, as far as the live stream goes, I'm not going to be able to do uh, full, you know, lessons because it takes uh, a lot of time. And for example, uh, in school, I already have like uh, 15, over 1500 video segments, uh, which is only available and it's still going to be only available um, on, uh, on my school side. Okay, but let me create right now. Um, shape so now I'm gonna just knock down the sides so chamfer it or fill it it if you wish and the easiest way always easiest way in this stage would be just to use a skew okay number one and by the way there's a different uh, skews uh, as you probably don't know uh, it's not just a skew. There's a different uh, angles. Okay, this skew is a 20 degrees. I do have a skew uh, 45 degrees, uh, but I really like to use uh, more 20 degrees skews because I'm uh, using uh, the back side of it a lot, and I'm using it just like that, just using uh, from the half of it and just the bottom part of it. Okay, so I can shape really quickly whatever I need to shape and yes I could use a uh, gouge absolutely but that gives me really quick really quick result so I don't want to lose my time and you are watching in real life so pretty much what you see it is my everyday life well I shouldn't say every day six days I'm working six days and the seventh day I'm resting
okay and I'm using again just the number 11 and uh, 5 eighths of an inch 15 millimeters little smaller than 5 eighths of an inch if uh, to be exact all right there's gonna be a part which is uh, a shell okay so we're talking about 15th 16th century which is a big deal about the shells rococo okay so it's not baroque so please understand and there's a lot of people actually don't understand the difference um, about baroque and uh, rococo rococo is uh, when you see a lot of shell work so what i'm talking about uh, let me show you the big picture let me try to show you a big picture so you can see the big movement is not done also i still uh, developing i still working on details and so on but you can see that is a shell okay so that's that movement called shell so that is a part of uh, rococo but it's not just the rococo it's uh, specific to italy and not only italy but specific to uh that period i mean i'm talking about 15th 16th century and venus okay venus venezia that's how i call it and uh, so and uh, all the acanthus movements and all the uh, the shape of acanthus uh, also probably I, I am trying to be authentic to the original uh, uh, craftsmen who used to live in Venus uh, in 16th and 15th century. Okay, so uh, for me, it's important to be authentic. Really important to be authentic. Okay, but let's continue. And uh, why I'm saying uh, specific to the Venus, you probably understand uh, people did not travel a lot before and they developed their own techniques based on the town they used to live okay and you know every town had different craftsmen different people you know carpenters and carvers stone carvers wood carvers and they developed their own um, idea okay, i'm using uh, three inches three and one eighths to be exact and develop this moment so it's gonna roll down like this okay hope it makes sense let me know if you can hear me okay on live okay So I hope uh, everything works out really good. All right. So now I've got the main shape of this uh, bowl, or it's uh, also called the uh, head of acanthus. And this part is going to be lower than that part. So I have to establish a movement like that. And let me show you from different um, angle okay how it's gonna look so it's gonna go like that okay so it's gonna go from below and then move up 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 and there's gonna be a center line somewhere right here okay so it's gonna be really interesting movement i hope it's gonna be really interesting movement all right so now i need to excavate that and again the same tool maybe i can use a little bigger but it's still going to be uh, number 11 and it's going to be 30 millimeters okay a little bigger show you from above again 
I am actually just establishing the main form of this movement. Just establishing the main form. Carefully, gonna get to that shape. Okay, now I have to be careful because uh, uh, I, I don't want to undercut. Okay, I don't want to go underneath of this uh, side. What I have to do, I need to make a slight movement like that because it has to be rolling like this and the main movement the main movement the main line I'm gonna be somewhere right here so and that cannot be just a flat surface right now it's just all flat and that's not good so it has to be be like a dome shape or sphere if you wish to call it that way all right a couple ways I could do I could use uh, just a skew but I do have a different tools so I, so I'll use just a big gouge okay just a big gouge well uh, I do have a question right now about uh, the clamping system uh, how I clamp this one I really you know you're gonna laugh maybe but uh, there is no clamping system at all on this uh, particular piece okay I did not clamp anything on it let me show how it's holding uh, this piece is so heavy it's really heavy I mean it's a solid solid block of wood I glued the uh, multiple pieces together and it's super heavy and it's just laying on my workbench but uh, below what I'm using let me show that to you I'm using those cookies okay so it's called uh, like a cookie it's just like <laughs> what whatever you eat uh, I've got different brands in this case I do have a bench cookie by Rockler and you can buy that uh, uh, you know from rockler.com I believe but they do have a different um, brands and I like it it's actually rubber on both sides and that's just that prevents me from sleeping and just because this piece is so heavy it's not moving anywhere my bench is moving you know uh, but not this piece uh, but the bench moving uh, there's a reason why uh, that bench moving okay because uh, I have uh, so many tools and I organize them you know in uh, drawers okay I have like uh, half a thousand of uh, uh, tools and I have uh, drawers I can open and reach which is uh, on both sides I've got on this bench I've got about uh, eight foot this direction and beside me it's also I'm sorry on the back side of me there is another bench with all my sharpening systems and that's also about uh, eight feet long and uh, all the drawers okay and I'm using this bench right now uh, on the wheels it's just a tool chest with the drawers as my bench which is uh, working really really good really good okay so hope it answers your question so that's what I'm using uh, to hold my piece okay okay let me continue and I want to create really good ball or sphere Right. but I have to be careful I really don't want to go too go I mean too deep this way on inside uh, it's not gonna be too good but this piece on the other hand is gonna be visible from the bottom I could go a little deeper but normally if you look straight to it you don't want to roll too much you're gonna lose the point of uh, 
design and it's not gonna look uh, organic okay it's not gonna look good again I'm using number seven and 80 millimeters about three inches three inches and one eighth to be exact if you in USA Well, I'm not sure if I understand that question correctly, how I hold that relief. Uh, it all depends. This is a big one uh, and uh, it's going to go um, all the way to the ceiling. And I really can't uh, use any, uh, you know, carving systems besides just uh, try to uh, create the support underneath, which is going to hold like this on a 45 degrees. It's what I'm going to do later. Right now it's good. And the height of my bench is good. I mean, usually in wood carving world, uh, if you want to save your back, your carving bench supposed to be by the elbow, which is in my case, is just approximately right there. I mean, I'm holding that uh, uh, by my elbow and that's just right there really good height so your back is not really hurt you you can work easily uh, you know on a flat like this but of course uh, later on I could raise it like that on a smaller scale uh, when I'm working on um, uh, on another pieces I'm using a, a carver's vice okay which is a by Veritas it's the brand of it right here I think you can see that it's a Veritas and uh, it goes um, I mean I can do a, a lot of different wood carving with this vise I mean there's uh, inserts with the different uh, sizes this is a two inch uh, let me show you the big one you know that is also project from school it's a big one and you can see it's mounts at the plate three inches plate on the back side and it goes inside of this vise and I can rotate uh, any direction I can work uh, upright upside down it's actually really handy to have okay hope it answers uh, your question but in this case it's uh, just uh, too big so you really can't do that so you have to be creative and work in environment you know sometimes i actually have a project i have to carve right in place on the restoration projects let's say and everything is already in place and i have to actually use a step ladder and just a go up right there and carve it okay but anyway see uh, what i did it's just a bowl sphere shape our dome shape and now I can just uh, start uh, uh, my movement okay so that is like I said acanthus and the center gonna go somewhere right here go on inside and go on the back side right there and gonna end up somewhere right here okay and the way I'm um, uh, drawing, uh, you're looking at this piece from above. And that's really important uh, when you look from above. If you can see this point and you can see this point, I really uh, all about the golden ratio and uh, Fibonacci numbers and stuff like this, Fibonacci sequencing. Okay. But the easiest way to figure out where's my center going to be, a center line going to be. I usually divide this line, this point and that point in 10 approximately. Of course, I'm not going to draw anything, but if you just put marks in 10 parts and the uh, Fibonacci sequence or golden ratio, uh, it's uh, 0.62. It's a 62 parts out of 100 or six parts out of 10. Okay, so that's also easy to figure out, which means five parts out of 10, which is uh, this would be five parts and that would be five parts right there. The middle is going to be five and I move slightly, little bit, just the eyeballing 
to the side which is going to give me approximately six parts out of ten okay hope it makes sense so that is going to be my middle line of this design all right and now i'm gonna draw my main movement all right and uh, every acanthus leaf is supposed to have uh, divisions i call them subdivisions you can call them uh, whatever you want but uh, let me show you on a bigger scale let me show you on a bigger scale um, i'm talking about um, for example this is the also the same thing like a head of acanthus and uh, there is a uh, divisions okay and uh, divisions divided by the eyes and the pipes every division has a I, that part is called I, and pipe gonna go from this I. But this is a division right here, that is division right there, that is division right here. This is the main head or the point, which is gonna be in this case right there. It's gonna be the main point right there. It's gonna be exactly the same, just different movement. And uh, now I have to divide that, uh, the first division, what I'm going to do, in the, divide in three parts, okay? So divide in three parts. And let me do that. And uh, again, I have to look uh, from above how it's going to look and take this point and that point and approximately visually move, move somewhere six parts out of ten, which is going to be right there. And I know uh, on the camera you don't see that because... Uh, uh, the camera located a little bit away from me and it just uh, doesn't represent exactly the way I'm looking at it even if it looks like you looking at the same uh, position like I'm looking at it but it's not okay it's not so let me draw and uh, let me actually do something else for you okay so I think it's gonna be a good idea so to explain Okay, if you're gonna look um, right here, let me try it. So let's say right now, when you look at the, just the leaf, here is gonna be my boundary for any acanthus leaf. Doesn't matter what style. In this case, it's gonna be Venetian style. What you're seeing right now, you're seeing only ball part, the upper part. Okay, there's gonna be a middle part of any leaf. Okay, so that's gonna be right there. You see only, only like I said, this. Okay, so now I have to have main divisions, which is gonna be something like that. Okay, so those are the main divisions, the main three divisions of the head. And most of the time, actually, uh, Acanthus has uh, five divisions, the main five divisions, okay? So that uh, applies to most of the Acanthus leaves, all right? Let me get rid of some of the lines. But later on, I'm going to divide that even more divisions like that, okay? Again, it's going to be divided in three, all of them. And that way I can develop any, any, any movement. And that's pretty much the principle of uh, what you can see everywhere else uh, on this piece. You know, just uh, based on the main divisions, then the subdivisions, and uh, even smaller divisions or smaller subdivisions, if you can say that. Okay? So, wonderful wonderful so let me at least at this live stream i'm not gonna show the whole thing but let me just uh, see i'm gonna use marker okay so that is my middle line so which is gonna go all the way below and i'm gonna undercut later on underneath right here so that is gonna be my point right here okay and from that i gonna start my divisions so there's gonna be a division there's gonna be 
another division and it's gonna go all the way so those are the main divisions right now just the three divisions okay and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see from the side and yes I hope you can see but uh, you can see it's uniform you're looking from uh, uh, the right side right now so and that's a pretty much uniformed look okay and uh, I'll try to explain uh, how I establish the eyes and the pipes well first of all you have to understand all the movements all movements in this case this is going to be a pipe okay and that is going to be a pipe that's how it's called okay so and uh, for those of you who don't know what the pipe is it is actually hold on just a second uh, you know raised part like that convex okay so in this case there's going to be an eye which is the place where one part going underneath of another and from every eye there's going to be a pipe going directly to the center part okay in this case there's going to be an eye which means this part gonna go underneath or it could go opposite direction of course but there's gonna be a pipe so that is a pipe and that is gonna be a pipe right here it's gonna be raised convex okay so for those of you who don't know if it's raised like that it's a convex I'm sorry convex yes and if it's a volley going downhill going like this it's a concave okay so that's what I am trying to work on all right but uh, anyway again position of the eyes I need to establish the right position for both eyes and in this case I think I need to move my eye a little bit right here okay all right and again I'm gonna take just the number 11 and in this case I think I could use uh, three millimeters number 11 which is uh, you know really small one eighth of an inch pretty much I could get bigger but I don't have to now I have to make the decision uh, uh, how it's gonna go I could go this part above that or I could go this part above this but logically that's supposed to go underneath of this part and this part gonna go underneath of this movement okay so but the uh, number one cut is gonna be just a straightforward cut around just like that and I can do exactly the same on the opposite side I can do exactly the same on the opposite side right in this case I don't worry about how deep I'm going uh, there is uh, some cases I don't want to go too deep but in this case it's okay and uh, the next step would be uh, I mean you have to understand that this movement has to go like inside okay so which means I have to blend that ridge right here and I have to blend this ridge so just uh, make it feel like it's going on inside and this is uh, flipping above okay and again I mean I could use uh, number 11 but I don't have to I could use uh, pretty much number three or just even skew uh, that would be appropriate in this case just a skew and try to blend that in and go underneath what my goal is uh, to create uh, an eye shape like this okay on both sides okay so it has to go underneath and let me use right here too all right let me read some comments Uh, 
Okay, uh, question about uh, Veritas, uh, Veritas Wise, what I use, okay? Yeah, there's gonna be, um, that is the Wise I was uh, trying to show you before. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of flexing, okay? Uh, but uh, if you uh, go online in my school, so you'll see I was able to hold actually, or even on my channel, take a look uh, at the line hats, okay? So those are huge pieces, we're talking about, uh, four feet pieces big pieces and uh, i was still carving them with that uh, holding device yeah there's some movement but you can hold really big pieces you can work uh, and i do have a uh, on uh, my school site i do have on school site uh, furniture panel so we do have a, one of the courses uh, uh, i'm teaching how to carve for furniture and you will see actually even the, for the furniture, I'm still using the same vise. Okay, now what I'm gonna do? Now I'm gonna uh, just to use again number 11 veiner and I'm gonna start removing some of the stuff what I don't need on both sides. Like I said, I'm not gonna roll too much because I don't wanna lose this point. It has to be visible from the bottom. And also it's gonna be part of, a, you know, of the room and you have to also see from the uh, far point of the room and you have to see the overall picture so that's why I'm not rolling it but number 11 that's what I'm gonna use right now just a normal number 11 uh, in this case I'm gonna take seven millimeters which is gonna be a little bigger than a quarter inch just a slightly bigger than a quarter inch if you are in the United States and I do apologize if I'm not answering right away uh, all the questions I am checking once in a while that I want to carve. Okay, I'm gonna remove some of the stuff I don't need. And yes, that I can get more aggressive right here. Because underneath of here, it's going to be also undercut. Let me show you. So what I'm working on right now from this uh, position. And I am going in. I'm not going to undercut yet, okay? So I'm not gonna carve too deep, but a little bit, just establish my main um, idea. And a little bit, I'll go in. But later on, yes, I will go uh, much deeper. And uh, I'm gonna do a much better job. Okay, let me use uh, number seven and just to clean a little bit uh, this area. Number seven, and I'll use uh, 25 millimeters, about one inch. Number six will work, number eight will work, even number nine will work, okay? It all depends uh, what you after. But my goal is to create a movement like that, going all the way and rotate this way, okay? That is uh, enough. And now, of course, because I, you know, created a lot of mess, I need to clean it. I need to clean it. And to clean it, I'll use three big, like 25 millimeters, one inch approximately, and remove whatever I don't need. Because, you know, when you have too many lines, it's just destructive. It's not helping at all. Although, I could actually use the same tool and kind of undercut a little bit this way. It's not going to be deep undercut yet, okay? I don't need it, but at least a little bit, and I can see exactly what is going on 
and I'm gonna remove that mess with the number 11 again and a quarter inch little bigger than a quarter inch so seven millimeters and that way I can see exactly boundaries of my carving okay so that is the shape let me check and right here see the grain is not going in my favorite but it's okay so that is good okay that is good and please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, uh, it's also available like I said the live stream it's also available uh, maybe even in better quality right on my site okay wood carving school site which is uh, school of wood carving dot com school of wood carving dot com I have uh, a lot of different lessons uh, right there over than 1500 videos okay so now I've got the main shape so you can see how it uh, moves and it is time to create better divisions or more or less like it's supposed to look okay let me re-establish the middle line that is gonna be a pipe it's gonna be a pipe again the pipe is always raised part convex and that is a eye that is the eye and now I'm gonna just do some of the more complicated some divisions and I apologize if you don't see everything because the camera position but essentially what I'm doing I am just creating extra subdivisions right there okay so it's gonna give me a really beautiful movement and uh, also i'm gonna create uh, even right here some subdivisions okay so there's gonna be a subdivision right there's gonna be a subdivision and i need to figure out the middle point which is gonna be right here but later on i'm gonna develop uh, this side but let me concentrate right now on that okay and i try to show you from a different point of view so see it's uh, pretty much consistent let me show you from this position okay so uh, you're looking from a side view and it just has a really good consistency but when you look uh, from above it looks like that okay so it moving toward that direction okay so the way I attack uh, those subdivisions, it's really important. Uh, a lot of people making big mistakes uh, when they just uh, try to chop this uh, without uh, relief cut. I call it relief cut and they make big mistake. Okay. Uh, to do the relief cut, I'm usually, usually use uh, the same uh, number 11 vayner. It's not the gouge, it's a vayner. If you don't know the difference between gouge and vayner, vayner has a U letter u shape and a gouge is always uh, the true radius this is not okay so this is a, a seven millimeters a uh, little bigger than a quarter inch and let me chop and chop so those are preliminary relief cuts all right and that way i can shape right now much better Okay, looks like I'm gonna be able to use uh, number five and big number five and create a much better shape right here. And I'm gonna go right away undercut. And uh, yes, uh, there's a different approach to undercutting. Uh, there's uh, some people really don't like to do a deep undercut. Uh, 
I call it extreme undercut and some people do like to do they really do uh, undercut a lot and I'm actually one of those guys uh, and I know the logic behind uh, why you don't want to undercut it also depends um, how this piece is going to be used okay if it's going to be a hit every day by people there's no I mean absolutely you don't want to undercut that uh, extremely because it's uh, becoming too fragile but on another hand on another hand when you do an extreme undercut it looks much better okay let me explain what I've just done okay maybe I need to use different tool uh, so I call it uh, movement uh, letter S like uh, S letter okay so you can see I started moving like this and then movement like that okay so it's a true like letter S and it just uh, gives me a really nice uh, look okay. okay just like that okay and I've done uh, those uh, letter S uh, a lot everywhere else I mean you can see for example if you look at this piece right here so see that is also letter S shape it has to be only on one side and it has to be only an outside movement uh, so like right here is also letter S and it just goes letter S outward right there is also letter S but it's going in but it's still outward so there's a middle line and from middle line it has to go out okay makes sense so that is the middle line and I have to do letter S right there I'm gonna be able to do some letter S right here in the opposite direction pointing that direction on this side Okay, wonderful. All right, so I'm uh, very much establishing good shape right here. Um, I'm not gonna do the details right now. I'm gonna do uh, the final details probably on my school site. But what I'm gonna do now, so I need to establish the pipes. Okay, so that is the pipe. And that is going to be the pipe also. And the pipe has to be convex. But to create that convex, I have to create the concave. Concave on both sides. Okay. And I don't want to create too deep, you know, concaves or convexes. Let me use, uh, let me use maybe just the number eight right now. And I'll just go little by little and this one is a quarter inch about six millimeters right on the side of the pipe okay I'm gonna go on this side also okay okay let me little bit make it more sharper and I'm gonna do exactly the same that is just the indication it's not the final cut it's just indication yet I also don't want to hit my middle line but still both sides it has to have a concave and also I want to raise uh, slightly this ridge okay and the way to do that exactly the same tool just like that make it a little cleaner and uh, now what I have to do I have to get rid of this ridge and that ridge Hopefully you can see that uh, on the camera because uh, it does not look good and it's always like that if you're doing uh, a lot uh, acanthus work. I'll just use uh, number three upside down. And please see how big uh, my bevel on this uh, tool is, okay? So we're talking about 16 millimeters bevel. So it's a really, really, really long bevel, okay? see from the side 
it just uh, slices uh, through the fiber through the fibers of wood really easily okay so just clean that little bit and exactly the same I'm gonna do right here and I don't worry about that I'm digging a little bit on the uh, inside of uh, my pipe that is uh, not the final final cut yet okay let me clean a little bit this pipe and I'll take care of uh, final cuts you know a little later although some of it I could probably take care right now so I could uh, just attack like that and yes I am breaking the rule of uh, working with the grain because I do have a ceiling on another side and I can't use tool from the opposite direction so the only way I can work it's only one direction right now okay but uh, let me show you how it looks in overall design all right um, again I'm gonna create a lot more divisions and I'm gonna excavate underneath you know I'm gonna create really nice and smooth transition underneath and I'm gonna finish it and next time you're already probably gonna see that uh, it's gonna be finished okay David I see you hi David how are you okay I can see some people from my school who actually for a long time some of them are for a long time members of my school and I really appreciate you people so I really do okay I think um, I'm gonna stop right now the live stream but I still gonna continue to carve and the rest of this movement is gonna be it's gonna be on my site which is um, schoolofwoodcarving.com if you want to see uh, you know further development of it so and yes we are still gonna work on all of it and you'll see all the details it's a huge project okay so it's gonna take a long time but snippets of it uh, you will see but anyway you should be able to get an idea maybe I can show you one more thing okay what I'm gonna do maybe just one more thing uh, before I gonna be gone. I don't want to take too much time. It's already like uh, an hour uh, You know that I'm live streaming in two minutes. It's gonna be an hour, but see this uh, middle ridge. I also want to Emphasize it. Okay, so I really want to see this middle ridge want to see that line and the way to do that There's a few different ways uh, I'm gonna create a concave, but it's almost no concave. Okay, so this is a little too big of a tool it's a number three that's what I'm using right on the side and yes later on I'm gonna create clean cuts really clean cuts so now it's not and I don't worry about it and of course I can do same movement on another side I'm still not losing uh, overall shape uh, you know the roundness because almost no concave but it's still concave it's number three concave <laughs> and it depends how the light gonna hit this ridge is gonna be little raised and you'll see it okay let me show that to you okay you're still gonna be able to see this ridge okay that's good that's enough for today live stream and people if you like it if you like that idea I would appreciate if you can comment uh, check out my site schoolofwoodcarving.com if you wanna really um, see you know in depth approach and so on and if you're not really bugged with my accent and I by the way keep my accent I like my accent that makes me unique I guess I'm talking about my Russian accent all right so but uh, check it out 
and I'm going to continue to carve and the rest of this movement is going to be visible only probably uh, on my school site. All right. Thank you very much.